brothers and sisters, we are now in the Christmas season. The Lord is born. Hallelujah. And uh, sabi sa response rin natin, the word was made known. And uh, yung salita ng Panginoon, naging tao. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, ito yung plano kasi ng Panginoon eh. So, makikita natin na noong December 25, we celebrated the birth of our Lord. And today, December 27, hindi pa tayo nakakalaya sa Christmas season, is the feast of St. John the Apostle. St. John the Apostle was the one who wrote the fourth gospel and uh, he is also called the Beloved. Bakit siya Beloved? Kasi sa lahat ng mga pinupuntahan ni Jesus, siya ang pinaka-close, siya ang pinaka-malapit. Kaya makikita ninyo sa painting ni Michelangelo, yung The Last Supper, Michelangelo niya, o Leonardo da Vinci, either of the two. Uh, si, Lord, si Saint John yung nakahilig doon sa kay Jesus, nakasandal siya kay Jesus. The meaning of that is that he is listening to the heart of Jesus, not just to the words of Jesus, but to his heart. That's why when you read, and hopefully you read the fourth gospel, napakalalim ng mga sinulat niya doon. And uh, yung first chapter ni St. John is one of the most beautiful. Para sa akin, ay kahit favorito ko yun. Sabi niya doon, In the beginning was the Word. Before all else, Jesus was there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And uh, everything came into being through Him. Kung baga, lahat ng creation, ang inspiration ni God the Father is Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, everything was created. And uh, ang maganda nitong plano ng Panginoon, nung para tayong maligtas sa kasalanan na sinimulan ni Sene Adam, He came into the world. He became like us. Sabi doon sa John chapter 1 verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Kaya na Jesus is the incarnate Word. Naging karne yung salita ng Panginoon. Nagkakarne, nagkaguhay. So what is the meaning of that? The way I see it is that ang tao, wala talagang pag-asa eh. Man cannot save himself. Nothing can save but man. And napakababa na ng estado ng tao to the point of being thrown into hell. Like, like a dry stick that is to be thrown into the fire, useless, wala talaga siya. So, ano ang naging tala ng Panginoon? Because we are the crowning glory of His creation. He cannot allow, the way I see it, because of His love for us, He cannot allow us to be just be thrown into the fire just like that. Para sa isang pagkakamali at para sa pagiging, pagiging uh, uh, dominante ng demonyo dito sa mundo, parang ganun na lang ba? So, it was all God's plan. Kaya nung dumating si Jesus dito bilang tao, tumaas yung estado ng tao. It is not that God, it is more, the way I see it, it is more than God becoming man. God shown that by becoming man, we became like Him. Tumaas yung estado ng tao that we qualify to enter heaven because of what Jesus has had done and what God has planned for us. Kaya nagkaroon ng pag-asa. Kaya ang message ng Pasko is hope, pag-asa. May pag-asa tayo dahil dito sa plan ng Panginoon sa atin na dumating siya to tell us so that he can be he can live with us and he can tell us what is really the plan of God kasi it is more than uh, the skies opening up and God speaking to the prophets it is more than that he became one with us kaya nga doon sa 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 first chapter sa John basahin niyo napakaganda sabi doon sa uh, John chapter 1 verse 4 in him was light in Him was light, and the light was the life of man. And in Him was life, 
and the life was the light of man. Ang liwanag ng tao, yung si Jesus, He gave us life. Kasi kung hindi tumating si Jesus dito, panis tayo na natin. I mean, kaya nga, ang thinking ng mga pagans noon, sabi nga ni Bishop sa homily niya kanina, sabi malantari rin yun, is that, sabi ng mga pagano, let's drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. Diba? Mag-enjoy na tayo sa mundo ngayon. Gawin na natin yung gusto natin ngayon kasi wala din lang mangyayari sa atin. It is a fatalistic philosophy. Useless din lang naman ang buhay eh. Kaya, dumat, kaya ang mga philosophy ng New Age is that sige, gawin mo lang yung gawin mo. Ang punishment mo sa next life, baka maging itis ka, maging lamok ka, maging, magiging ganun ka. Kasi ganun lang ang buhay eh. Nagre-reincarnate ka lang. But is, that is not the point of a Christian philosophy. The Christian point of view is that after this life, is the next life. is either the eternal life or the eternal damnation. Mamili ka doon. And ang accountability natin is what is the life that we are living now. Kaya nung tumating si Kristo, panis lahat ng mga human philosophy na yan, nawala lang mga yan. Because God showed us that there is hope. Papano sa pagdating ng bani Kristo? Hindi. Ang message niya sa atin, sa reading natin, tingnan niyo. Bakit John of, uh, John, naliwanagan ako kanina doon sa company ni Bishop eh. Bakit, uh, the, sabi niya, ang irony of it, John the Apostle ngayon, ang reading ngayon is the burial of Jesus. Di ba? Yung kamatayan ni Kristo ngayon, ang reading, ay eh, katatapos lang ng Pasko, bakit kamatayan ni Kristo yung pinag-uusapan? Sa tomb. Pero ang maganda dito, when Magdalene, sinabi niya doon sa mga apostles na, Jesus is risen. Buhay si Kristo. Sino unang tumakbo? Si John the Apostle. Siya yung unang pupunta doon sa tomb. Takbo siya talaga. Pero pagdating niya sa tomb, ito ang maganda, hindi siya agad pumasok. Open yung tomb, pwede naman siya pumasok. Bakit hindi siya pumasok? Eh, he, according to history, siya yung pinakabatay doon sa mga apostles. Kaya nung tumakbo siya doon, hindi siya agad pumasok. Bakit? Kasi tumatakbo din si St. Peter. Kaya lang inunahan ni St. Peter. Siguro St. Peter yung pinakamatanda doon sa, sa mga apostles. Inantay na si Peter. Bakit? Si Peter yung bossing eh. Siya yung unang pumasok doon. Ang message dito is that there is hope in the, in the birth of Christ and in the death of Christ. Pinakita yun na The, the, the journey of life of us, people, may resurrection. We will not die in pain. Because when Christ resurrected from the dead, may pag-asa tayo to be like Christ, to be with Christ. Kaya kung baga yung summary ng pagdating ni Kristo at yung feast day ni St. John ngayon, sinamarize na doon yung istorya ng salvation natin. Summarize na. Kung baga yun yung complete story ng pagdating ni Kristo sa atin. That He will raise us up. May pag-asa. Ang kaluluwa natin may pag-asa. Hindi tayo matatapon kung saan sa kadiliman. At ang isang point doon sa pagtakbo ni John doon, He waited for, the, for Saint Peter. Sa istorya ng mundo natin ngayon, we, uh, we wait for the decision of the church to prove that It is authentic. Tayo lahat, excited tayo kung may miracles dito, may kinuusap pang Diyos dyan, mayroong tumubuhi yung kamay dito, suddenly, may kumakain ng mga, ay, may lumalabas sa bibig niya, yung Eucharist. All these things, we wait for the official teaching of the Church. That's why we rely on the Church as our pillar of truth. Sino ang magsasabi sa atin ng katotohanan? Because ang simbahan natin is guided by the Holy Spirit even before. That even though in the midst of the church uh, entering into scandals, into uh, marami tayo mga cases, issues, and uh, controversies ang simbahan, but the Holy Spirit is still leading the, the church into the fullness of time, into the fullness of life, into Christ. 
Kaya yun yung representation doon na nung tumakbo si St. John, inantay niya si St. Peter. St. Peter to today is being represented by the, by the Pope as being the supreme head of the church. Kaya yun yung istorya doon. Nung na-confirm that Christ resurrected from the dead, kasi pagpasok ko, empty tomb na eh. Wala na si Cristo. Ibig sabihin, it is confirmed, kinonfirm ni St. Peter that Christ is truly risen. Which is now our hope, yun yung pinangahawakan nating pag-asa sa pagdating ni Cristo. Kaya we should rejoice. It should be a rejoicing moment for us. Sa 28, ano ang feast day? Holy. Holy innocence. Ano yung holy innocence? Ang istorya na yung konti. Ano yung holy innocence? Yung mga baby, bukas, nung panahon ni Kristo, pinagpapatay. So, pinakita doon na yung istorya natin is not an easy, although we have hope in Christ, the next day of our celebration is the massacre of babies. Can you imagine that the story of Christ pagdating niya dito eh? Hindi madali. Ibig sabihin doon, hindi madali ang pagsunod kay Kristo. It will entail sacrifices, challenges, persecutions. And, and to think that, that these innocent babies gave up their lives so that Christ may live as one well with us. Ano nangyari yun? Kasi si Herod, ayaw niyang may kakompetensya siya. Nung nabalitaan niya through the three kings na merong hari dito sa, dito sa Israel mismo, hindi niya matanggap kasi eh, siya yung hari. Eh, ba't hindi, hindi magpupugay sa kanya yung tatlong hari? Eh, may dala siya ng regalo siya. Wala siyang regalo na tanggap. Eh, nagpanggap siya na, sige, hanapin ninyo. Pag nahanapan ninyo, sabihin niyo sa akin para ako rin ay mag-worship sa kanya. Pero ang nagpapag-ismay, kapag sinabi niyo sa akin kung nasaan siya, tutulasin ko siya. He cannot afford to have competition. Hindi niya si hero. Kaya, nung yung tatlong hari, nakita nila si Jesus, nung nagpugay sila, kinagabihan, nung nanaginip sila, sinabi ng angel sa kanila, huwag kayong babalik kay hero. Uh, umalis na lang kayo sa ibang daan. Nung nalaman ni Hero na ganun nangyari, hindi niya maharap si Kristo, la, nagalit siya. Lahat ng babies sa Israel, two years old and below, patayin. The next day, it was an order and all the soldiers of the king, Hero, went out killing the babies. And these babies sacrificed their lives para si Kristo mag-uwi. Ang dami, it was, uh, Israel was crying. Because yung mga babies nila, ubus eh, pinatay. And during the killings, Joseph and Mama Mary escaped. They escaped. And so this is the story of our faith. Na ang pagdating ni Kristo, eh sabi nga eh, We'll, di- we'll divide the world. <laughs> yung para sa mundo at yung para sa kanya. There, there will be persecutions which is happening until now. And now our babies are being sacrificed once again through the evil bill, the RH bill, which seeks to legalize the killing of babies. And it's happening again. Bakit kaya? So it makes a we have to stand up for our faith na we are One body in Christ. Sina mga pinapatay ng bill na ito? Or ng mga tao ito? Or those who are in power today? The body of Christ is being persecuted once again. So, sabi ni St. Peter, being our Pope, sabi niya doon, Stay sober and alert. Uh, first letter of St. Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Stay sober and alert. Ano ang sober? Huwag kayong lasing. <laughs> yung lasing, hindi niya lang nagagawa niya. Yung alert, yung alert, gising sa, pa, sa, paninip, sa pananampalataya natin, dapat alert tayo, vigilant tayo. Because the devil is prowling like a roaring lion, waiting for someone to devour. The representation of hero, uubusin niya lahat yung mga May modern hero ngayon. 
which seeks to kill the babies. Kaya sabi doon, uh, resist him. Resist him. How will you resist the devil? Solid in your faith. Yung pananampalataya natin. Lagi kong sinasabi dito, ano ang, ano ang nourishment of faith? Prayer, my dear friends. Praise God, you are doing it. What is the goal of faith? Salvation. Kaligtasan. Kaya nga sabi doon ni St. Peter, resist him solid in your faith, knowing that the community of believers all over the world are suffering the same. We are all suffering. Because we are one body in Christ and the body of Christ is suffering. But in the end, yung istorya natin, Christ, we will all rise from the dead. So there is hope. So, my dear friends, yung faith natin na challenge lagi. Doon sa uh, Diocese and Youth Day natin, ganun na naman ang ating uh, um, theme. Diba? Sabi niya, faith is a gift manifested by God. So, it is, um, faith should be coupled with good works. The good works there is charity, is love. So we don't stop in nourishing our faith. It should be given so that faith will grow. Lalong mag-flourish yung faith natin. Nagmamanitrust siya sa charity. So this is the challenge for us. What happened na tumating ang ating si Typhoon Sendong? Typhoon Sendong has a message that is that uh, is a typhoon that carries with it a message. The message of charity. We are being challenged. We are actually in a state of calamity. Can you imagine that we are in a state of calamity? So we should uh, do our share. We do our share in in lifting the spirits of those who are in distress. We have our own ways of doing this and do not fail, my dear friends. We do not just have to be physically helping them. There are many of our brothers and sisters who are also suffering around us. We will just look around and God is giving us the chance to manifest our faith in love. Let's do our share so that the body of Christ, the sufferings and the body of Christ, we share in the sufferings. Sabi nga ng mga santo, if we share in the sufferings of Christ, then we will also share in His glory, in His resurrection. Amen.